Think back to when you first saw your favorite sci-fi ship on screen. It wasn't just the design that grabbed you, it was the glow. The engine trails, the windows lit up in the void, the way light made it feel alive. That's the power of lighting. And the best part? You can bring that same magic to your own models without needing to be an engineer. Today I'm going to demystify lighting for scale models. I've had a lot of builders tell me it's intimidating, it's too complicated, or I don't know where to start. But here's the thing, it doesn't have to be that way. By the end of this video, I'll show you that lighting really is just about a few simple basics. You don't need to be an engineer, you just need to know how LEDs behave, how to power them, and how to keep them safe. Once you've got the foundation, you can light almost anything. Lighting is one of those things that takes a model from static to dynamic. It literally brings it to life. It creates drama, it makes people stop, lean in, and really connect with the story your build is telling. It adds depth, realism, and excitement. And honestly, it's just plain fun. Don't think of lighting as an optional extra. Think of it as just another tool in your kit, right along photo etch or weathering. Once you light your first model, I promise you'll start imagining how to light the next one. As I said, when many modelers think about lighting, the first reaction is, that looks complicated. But think about the first time you airbrushed or tried weathering. You didn't master it overnight. You learned by experimenting. Lighting is the same way. Once you try it, you realize it's not scary, and the payoff is absolutely worth it. At its core, it's all about basics. How current flows, how LEDs behave, and how resistors keep them safe. You also don't need a huge bench full of gear. To start, all you really need a soldering iron, a pair of wire strippers, and a set of helping hands to hold things steady. That's it. With this minimal kit, you can start lighting today. Don't let equipment be the barrier that stops you. Next, let's look at materials. The everyday building blocks of your circuits. Flux core solder. Flux is the medium that allows solder to flow when heated. Different gauges and colors of wire. Uh, I personally prefer magnet wire or wire wrapping wire. Heat shrink tubing or liquid electrical tape insulates solder joints. Glue or other adhesives secure components so nothing moves around inside the model. That's all you need to build safe, clean, and functional lighting setups. Now for the stars of the show. Light emitting diodes. Bare LEDs are fantastic when you're starting out. The most common sizes are 3 and 5 millimeter which cover most general modeling needs. But you'll also find other shapes and sizes, flat tops, straw hat, rectangular, and tiny 1.8 millimeter LEDs. Then we have SMD LEDs, surface mount devices. These are much smaller than standard LEDs and are often used when space is tight. They come in different size codes like 0402, 0603, 0805, and 1206. Those numbers refer to their dimensions in millimeters. The smaller the number, the smaller the LED. For example, an 0402 is just 0.4 millimeters by 0.2 millimeters. If you're lighting larger areas, there are LED tape strips, chip on board, cob strips, and even LED filaments, flexible or rigid. I use these a lot for Starship engines, warp nacelles, or window runs. Anywhere you need smooth, even illumination instead of single-point lighting. And of course, power sources can range from coin cells, AA battery packs, to wall adapters. But the important part is always the same. Make sure your LEDs are matched with the right resistor and power supply. Why LEDs need resistors? LEDs are very picky about voltage and current. Give them too much, even briefly, and they burn out too little and they won't light at all. Most standard LEDs operate in a narrow range, around 2 to 3 volts and 20 milliamps of current. A resistor keeps the LED in the safe zone, protecting it and making your lighting reliable. The power supply you choose depends on the needs of your model. Small setups with just one or a few LEDs might only need a tiny power source and resistors aren't a big concern. Larger setups, multiple LEDs, long strips, or bigger models require higher voltage or current. That's when resistors become essential to prevent your LEDs from being overloaded.
Think of a resistor like a narrowing in a water pipe. The power supply, voltage, is your water pressure. Current is the water flow. The resistor, the narrowing that controls the flow. Without a resistor, the LED gets blasted with too much current and dies instantly. And this is where Ohm's law comes in. It explains how voltage, current, and resistance are all linked. Understanding this relationship is the key, and coming up, we'll go step by step through how to calculate the right resistor for any LED so your lights stay safe and bright. Have you ever looked at the stripes on a resistor and wondered, what does this mean? Don't worry. It's just a simple color code for the resistor's value. The first one, two, or three bands are the number. The fourth band tells you how many zeros to add, the multiplier. And the fifth band, if present, shows tolerance, basically how precise the value is. Now, you don't need to memorize this. When you buy resistors, they'll come labeled, and online calculators make reading them almost effortless. In practice, when lighting models, we usually stick to a handful of common resistor values for LEDs anyway, so this is really just a quick reference. Whoa, this looks complicated, right? R equals VS minus VF divided by IF? That might feel like math from another planet. I get it. This is exactly why so many modelers get intimidated by lighting. But here's the thing, you don't need to be a mathematician. We're going to take this seemingly complex formula and break it down into simple step-by-step -step calculations that will make figuring out the right resistor for your LEDs feel easy. Here's how to do it in practice. First, all the math, then I'll break it down. Let's say you've got a 9-volt power supply and an LED with a forward voltage of 3 volts. Subtract that. 9 minus 3 equals 6. Next, divide by the current. Most LEDs run at 20 milliamps or 0 0.02 amps. 6 divided by 0 0.02 equals 300. Since 300 isn't a standard resistor value, you'd use 330 ohms. The next one up. Done. Your LED is safe and it shines at full brightness. And hey, if you don't want to do this, no worries. There's online calculators that do this instantly. Now, let's talk wiring. You've got a couple options. Series means the current flows through each LED in sequence. Parallel means each LED has its own path to the power source. Let's talk pros and cons as far as series, fewer resistors, less wire. Cons, however, you need a larger power source. Your power draw across the circuit can't exceed the input voltage. If one component fails, they all fail. So series means current flows through each LED in turn. The same current passes through all of them, so if one LED burns out, the path is broken, and they all go dark. In practice, series can save on wiring, but it is less reliable. As far as parallel, the pros are you can run many more LEDs. You're only limited by the amperage of the power supply. Individual components, pardon me, individual component failures don't impact the entire circuit. One of the biggest cons is that you need much more wire and many more resistors. Parallel means each LED has its own path back to the power source. If one fails, the others don't notice. Parallel uses more wiring but it's a much safer option for your model. Once you've got LEDs and resistors sorted, it's time to actually connect them. Soldering is the most reliable method, and it's easier than you might think. The white LEDs I'm using run at 3 or 3.2 volts, and I'll be using a 9 or 12 volt power supply, and we'll be using a 470 ohm resistor to step that down. The first thing I want to do is pre-tin the soldering iron, and that is putting solder on the tip, and it improves heat transfer. But I'll also be pre-tinning the leads of the LEDs, the resistors, and the wires for the same reason, to improve solderability. Before soldering everything together, I have trimmed down the positive lead on the LED and trimmed down the lead on the resistor. Once they're soldered, trim the leads a bit more, then solder on the wires. This is all to save as much space inside the model as possible. 
Once you're done, your resistor LED combination should look something like this. Now that we've covered all the basics, before you dive in, here's some quick tips. Plan your circuit before soldering. Start small. A single LED is a win. Always use the right resistor. Test your circuit before sealing it inside the model. Cover solder joints to prevent shorts. And don't. Don't overload LEDs with too much current. Don't rush your soldering. Bad joints can cause problems later. Don't skip testing. Test, test, test. These little habits will save you a ton of frustration. So, how do you actually start? Keep it simple. Try one LED with a resistor on a breadboard. Breadboards let you test circuits without soldering, so you can experiment safely. Move things around, swap resistors, try different LED colors and placements. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how you learn. Every single modeler starts here. And from here, the best thing you can do is practice. But for additional resources, you can use online tools like LED resistor calculators and color code charts to save time. You should definitely check out more of the videos on Jason Space Doc YouTube channel. I've got plenty of tutorials and builds to look over. For upgrade parts and accessories, I've got my Etsy store, Jason Space Doc. For electronics designed with modelers in mind, HGA Model Works is a fantastic resource. And if you're on a budget, places like Amazon, AliExpress, and Timu are good for resistors, wires, and LEDs. Just double check the specs. And now it's your turn. Got questions about what we've covered? Something you're stuck on? Drop it in the comments. No question is too basic. As I said, every modeler starts somewhere. And before we wrap this up, here's how you can keep this journey going. Subscribe to this channel. As I said, I've got more lighting tutorials, builds, and new ones coming up all the time. You can check out my Amazon shop. I've got links to the exact tools and supplies I use, It's an and it's an easy way to support my channel while gearing up for your own projects. And if you want more direct help, my Patreon has a tech support tier where you can reach out to me personally for troubleshooting and guidance. Easiest way to find it all, scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you to my link tree with everything in one place. Thank you for watching, and remember, model building is all about the journey. Every kit comes with its own challenges, but each one is an opportunity to grow your skills and create something truly one of a kind. So keep building, enjoy the process, and remember, it's not about perfection, it's about pushing your craft forward one build at a time.